In this video, we will be discussing water and its relationship to biology. Water is considered the biological medium on Earth, which means that all living organisms require water in some way. It is also the only common substance that exists in all three physical states in the natural environment. Those three physical states are liquid, solid, and gas. What makes water able to do what it does is its structure, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. It, its structure provides some unique emergent properties, and those are the properties that help make Earth suitable for life. The primary characteristic of water that gives it its interesting emergent properties is that the atoms of hydrogen and oxygen are bonded in a polar covalent way. If you recall from chapter 2, what that means is the electrons spend more time near one atom than they do the others in the bond. In this case, the electrons spend more time around the oxygen than they do the hydrogen. What that does is it causes the molecule to be polar. That is to say there is an overall uneven distribution of charges on the water molecule. It's this polarity that allows water to do what it does, particularly form hydrogen bonds with each other and other substances. If we look at a diagram of that, we see our water molecule here with the hydrogen represented in white and the oxygen represented in red. Notice that there's a little symbol here next to the oxygen end. This is the Greek letter delta in lowercase form. And then there's a minus next to it. What that means is, based on the electron distribution between the polar covalent bonds of hydrogen and oxygen, the electrons, as we've stated, spend more time around the oxygen, giving it a partial negative charge. Because those electrons are spending more time around oxygen, they are spending less time around hydrogen, thus giving hydrogen a partial positive charge. That leads to an interaction between the negative the negative oxygen end of the molecule and the positive hydrogen end of the molecule. That interaction is what we call a hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonding leads to four emergent properties of water, which we will discuss in this video. The first is its cohesive behavior. The second is, it, is its ability to moderate temperature. And its, thir its third is the expansion upon freezing and the fourth is its versatility as a solvent. We're going to go through each one of these in the next few slides. The cohesion of water molecules is based on the hydrogen bonding. Cohesion basically is that water molecules can be held together to one another and that again is through the hydrogen bonding. This cohesion helps in a lot of ways in living organisms. In conjunction with another property of water called adhesion, which is the attraction between water and other substances, cohesion and adhesion can help plants in a number of ways. One of those is transporting water from the roots all the way up into the leaves, and that is a combination of cohesion and adhesion. Another resulting property of cohesion is what's called surface tension. Water exhibits what we call high surface tension, and surface tension is the measure of how hard it is to break the surface of a liquid. If you've ever gone swimming and you've jumped off the diving board and belly flopped, you have a lot of experience with surface tension. If you recall, that's a fairly painful process. That's because the surface of the water has high tension and it's hard to break it if you belly flop onto it. As we stated earlier, water can also help moderate temperature. That's because hydrogen bonds can absorb and release heat from the air through the water. They can release and absorb a large amount of heat with only a slight change in their own temperature, thus allowing them to regulate temperature of the air around the water. This is due to what's called a high specific heat. What that means is, as we said earlier, water can hold a lot of heat. The specific heat is defined as the amount of heat that must be absorbed or lost for one gram of that substance to change its temperature by one degree Celsius. The specific heat of water is one calorie, which is a measure of heat per gram per degree Celsius. While that may not sound like a lot, it's actually a fairly high specific heat. And because of this high specific heat, water resists temperature changes to a significant degree. How does that help biological organisms? Well, one is through what's called evaporative cooling. When water evaporates from a liquid to a gas, it takes heat with it. This is called the heat of vaporization. 
and that heat of vaporization is how much heat a liquid must absorb for one gram to be converted to gas. Because of water's high specific heat, it, it has a high heat of vaporization. So as the liquid evaporates, water in this case, its remaining surface cools. We call that evaporative cooling. When you sweat, your body cools down through a process of evaporative cooling, and it helps stabilize the temperature of your body, which is very important for maintaining homeostasis. Another property of water that we talked about is how it changes when it gets colder. As water gets cold and freezes, it actually becomes less dense. That means there's fewer molecules per volume of water. Because of that, water actually floats. You, this may not sound like a very important property, but if you think about it, any body of water that freezes in the wintertime if it were to freeze solid, it would kill any of the living organisms in that body of water. So since ice floats, living organisms can sustain themselves throughout winter because the surface is going to be frozen, but the water underneath will not be frozen. Here's what that looks like chemically or at a molecular level. In ice, notice that the hydrogen bonds are very highly ordered into a crystalline structure. There's a lot more space between the molecules than you see in liquid water where the bonds are constantly breaking and reforming at a fairly high rate. So water is more dense than ice is. Therefore, ice is going to float. And you can see this little shrimp here that lives in a cold climate can still survive while the surface of the water is frozen. Water also is the solvent of life. Now, let's go through some vocabulary so we understand what that means. A solution is a liquid that is completely homogeneous mixture of substances. So, for example, a glass of tea would be a solution. There are two components to that solution. The solvent, which is the dissolving agent, and the solute, which is what is dissolved in the solvent. Now, water acts as the solvent of life. Solutes dissolved in water in a living organism, for example, could be anything from chloride ions, sodium ions, calcium ions, things like that. We call any solution in which water is the solvent an aqueous solution. Aque means water. Your body contains an aqueous solution. Water is a very versatile solvent due to its polarity, and this is all based, again, on hydrogen bonding as are most of the properties of water. When an ionic compound is dissolved in water, each ion is surrounded by water molecules in what's called a hydration shell. That's what happens to ions in your blood and your bodily fluids. We can further address some vocabulary around substances related to whether or not they can tolerate water. Any substance that is hydrophilic is one that has an affinity for water or likes water. Philia means it likes something or is a, has an affinity for it. So if a substance is hydrophilic, it has an affinity for water. A substance that is hydrophobic is one that does not have an affinity for water. Phobic means it doesn't like. So anything that's hydrophobic does not like water. Hydrophobic molecules include things like oils and fats and stuff like that. Hydrophilic substances are anything that would be ionic, such as salt, um, common table salt, sugar, things like that, and those have an affinity for water. Another property of water that's based on the hydrophobic, hydrophilic stuff is that it can be acidic or basic. Okay? A hydrogen atom can dissociate from water, producing what we call a hydrogen ion. The molecule that lost that hydrogen ion is referred to as a hydroxide ion, or an OH-. The molecule with the extra proton is what we call now a hydronium ion. Water can basically dissociate into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. That's going to lead to properties that we call acidic or basic properties. Okay? An acid is any substance that increases the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution. So when an acid dissociates in water, it releases hydrogen ions. 
A base is any substance that reduces the hydrogen ion concentration of the solution. In other words, it will take hydrogen ions out of the solution. If an acid is strong, if an acid or base is strong, it will dissociate completely in water, thus changing the hydrogen ion concentration of the solution. Weak acids and bases reversibly release and accept hydrogen ions, but can still shift the balance of these hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions away from neutral, which means there's an equal amount of both. We measure the amount of hydrogen ions in a solution by what's called pH. It's a mathematical relationship that you're not going to need to worry about, but suffice it to say that the pH of a solution is defines its hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, For a neutral aqueous solution, the pH is 7, which indicates that there are equal amounts of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions in the solution. Again, you don't need to worry about how to calculate pH for the purpose of this class. Solutions that are acidic have pH values that are less than 7. Solutions that are basic have pH values greater than 7. Most of your biological fluids fall into the range of 6 to 8 pH, and that's fairly normal. If we look at the pH scale, we can see the different pH values for acidic substances and basic substances. If we look at the low end of the pH scale, with a low pH, which means high hydrogen ion concentrations, we have things like battery acid, gastric juice, which is found in your stomach, lemon juice, etc., etc. More neutral pH substances include things like saliva, human blood, the inside of your small intestine, things like that. And then high basic solutions or low hydrogen ion concentration solutions include things like ammonia, bleach, oven cleaner.